We are the Mofu people, the people of the mountains. We survive thanks to the millet that we grow. To live here, you have to work a lot, like all the insects around us. If you are lazy, even the ants have a better life, because they always manage to find something to eat. A large mountain range stretches along the far northern area of Cameroon. These are the Mandara Mountains, home to the Mofu. It's the end of the dry season. The land will soon be drenched with rain. The time has come to start the sowing season. The farmers drop a few millet seeds in each hole. The lives and survival of the mountain people depend on this precious grain. But the Mofu people have to negotiate with the insects to ensure a good harvest. Some are allies and are worshipped. Others are enemies to be battled. You see, Idrisu, our life is the same as the insects. Like us, they are looking to stock up on millet to feed themselves. Today, everyone is waiting for the rain. Without it, there's nothing to eat. Look, the black ant. Malokoteng is already stealing the first seeds that we planted. This ant and the Dlirba termite are the ones that bother us the most. They eat our supplies when we forget to pay tribute to our ancestors. The month of May has arrived, and the rains have still not come. Like every year, the village is worried about the situation. The chief's clan has gathered around him. It's also an opportunity to bring up individual problems and to find solutions. And you, Sidi, do you have any problems? On top of the rain that is late in coming, I have another worry. The termite, Lirba, is attacking my walls and roofs and is getting dangerously close to my granaries. I have tried everything to destroy its nest, but I don't know what else to do. Does anyone have a solution? The only thing that can drive Dlirba out for good is the ant Jaglavak. When Jaglavak decides to hunt termites, they all flee and never come back. Yes, but Jaglavak doesn't come just like that. To request its help, we have to offer prayers. And only then it might drive the termites far from your home. It's the prayers that spur them to fight Dlirba. Isn't there another solution? Jaglavak is not easy to find, and my roof has already collapsed. You have to respect the traditions. It's because you disregard all this that you have so many problems. I'm just looking for a solution, that's all. I don't disregard anything. We told you, the only solution for getting rid of the termites is Jaglavak. Don't the whites use a powder for that? But do you have the money to buy it? When you don't respect the traditions, you get what you deserve. Have you forgotten your ancestors? You should know the prayers and be able to solve the problem on your own. I'm looking for a solution, not problems. Listen, show me this termite mound and I will try to call Jagravak. The termites have already caused Sidi's roof to collapse in several spots. If they're not thrown out soon, they may attack the granaries and the millet stored in them. And for the Mofu, stealing millet is a serious act. To attract Jaglavak into the termite mound, the old Matskrawai is carrying red ochre, the sacred powder. Come closer. The termite mound is just over here. Mm -hmm. 
They come here and climb up to the roof. Let's call Jarglavak. It will take care of this problem. Jarglavak, we need you. Jarglavak, we offer you the ochre that you like. Jarglavak, hear our prayers. Do your children come here? Yes. Spare the children and the animals. Hunt only these termites in the house, Jagravak. Look, the termite nearby is here. I hope that Jaglavak will answer our plea. When a termite colony moves into a traditional house like Sidi's, it finds an abundant supply of wood, straw, and seeds, which are its primary food. But the hill of earth rising in Sidi's house only represents the visible part of the termite mound. The network of tunnels goes several meters underground. The termite mound has several million insects and houses one of the best organized societies in the animal kingdom. There are several castes. The impressive soldiers with powerful mandibles and enormous heads are responsible for defending the entire termite mound, while workers are busy with the overall administration of the colony, feeding and caring for the young, harvests, construction. Only the winged insects can reproduce. They will soon leave the nest and fly off to create new colonies elsewhere. Everyone has a specific role. These workers take care of the royal couple, particularly the queen. The queen. If we compare the colony to a living organism, she would be its heart. She measures up to 20 centimeters and is attended to constantly. She is the colony's only progenitor. She's pampered within the royal residence, while her enormous abdomen ripples with muscular contractions that accompany the incessant laying of thousands of eggs. During her 10-year life, the queen can lay up to 30,000 eggs per day. 30,000 termites, which expand the ranks of the colony every day, and those of the thousands of frenetic builders that can add more than one meter to the height of the nest every year. Here, look. It's because of Dlirba that my roof has collapsed. They are everywhere. They must have been here for a while. They are everywhere in the beams. That's not good. They are tunneling through the walls to reach the roof. Yes, you can see the small holes they're making in the wall. If they attack my granary, they could bring it down as well. And if my granary collapses, what becomes of my millet? Are these termites going to help me rebuild it? Be patient. We'll soon see if they heard our prayers. If the Jagavak ant has heard their prayers, it should appear at Sidi's house in the next few days to drive out the insatiable termites. But when the drought persists, Jagavak looks for cool spots underground and cannot hear the call of men. In this case, they have to go to gather it. Les invertébrés. Qu'est-ce qu'un invertébré donc? Un invertébré donc, c'est quoi? 
Oui. On applaudit fort. Nous voyons les soldats ont les berets rouges, non Ils défendent. Et la reine, c'est-à-dire la maman de tout. Nous avons donc trois groupes chez les termites. Lesquels Oui. Les soldats. Oui. Les ouvriers. Oui. La reine. Eh bien, on applaudit. Bravo! Encore? Bravo! Weeks go by, and there's still no rain. The ground is dry. It needs water. The granaries are almost empty. If the rain doesn't fall soon, the village will weep again this year. For the Mofu, there's always a reason when the rain doesn't fall. Adultery and unfinished work are misdeeds that prevent the chief, master of the rain, from making water fall from the sky. Chief, it would be wise to awaken the stones that make the rain fall. The village is worried because last season was disappointing. It's true, but you know that conditions are not quite right. Certain villagers have committed offences. I agree, Chief, but should the mistakes of some endanger the entire village, this is not good. I agree about calling for rain, but there are still adulterers to judge, and some roofs must be repaired. Thank you, Chief. I promise you we will be worthy of this decision. We will do what is necessary. I'm counting on you. Thank you, Chief. Let's take out the rainstones. I will bring you what you need. The chief, a converted Muslim, is no longer able to perform the traditional rituals on his own. Yet, it's still always up to him to take the initiative and ask one of his closest followers to awaken the stones. To liberate their magic, they are fed leaves, python fat, blood from a sacrificial goat, and the contents of its belly. Very few people are allowed to rub the rainstones. Stones, I offer you this so that you bring the rain. I offer blood for your food. Wake up and bring us good rain without any violence. Mm. 
pour the water and wash them well, then put them back, well protected from the sun. Stored with great care in the chief's home with other magical stones, like the war stones and the drought stones, the rain stones are a symbol of power for the Mofu. Not so long ago, wars would break out to claim those of nearby villages. Grandfather, what is this insect? It is a good insect. It comes out of the ground when the rains draw near. When you see them in the fields, you have to go plow the ground quickly. The rain isn't far away now. Using the sound of drums, the chief tells the villages that it's time for them to prepare the earth, where the millet seeds have been waiting for the rain for several weeks. The abundance of these first rains is crucial because the ground has hardened after months of drought and will quickly absorb them. Thanks to the rain, the tiny millet seeds will grow into strong young sprouts. And thanks to the rain, the insects will come out from underground to once again populate the fields and villages. Thank you for the good rain. But the denizens of the underground are rapidly submerged by the intensity of the storm. In the nest of the Malakoteng ant, discipline breaks down for a moment and everyone runs for their lives. First rains produced some unfortunate surprises for the humans, too. Sidi's home, already damaged by the voracious appetite of the termites, quickly caves in under the weight of the drenched straw. Because the rain is back. For the Mofu, it's the start of a new year, the start of a new millet cycle. When their nest was flooded, the Malakoteng ants brought their stored seeds out to dry, and for another reason too. Do you know the story of the millet bird and the ant? No. Then listen, it's a story about helping each other. 
You see the bird that made its nest right there? The yellow bird? The Malakoteng ant is never far away. After the rain, it always brings out its seeds to dry them, but also for the bird. It's no coincidence that the bird builds its nest here. It sings and tells the ant when the rain is over, so that it can bring its seeds out. And in return, the ant lets it peck at its supplies because it knows that the bird has nothing to eat right now. Look. But the bird is honest. Once the millet has grown, it will return the share it borrowed from the ant. It perches on the spikes, shaking off seeds that fall on the ground where the ant can gather them. Once the bird has returned the millet, we can start the harvest. The sky has been generous, and the rains have once again filled the dried riverbeds. Now that the ground is waterlogged, it's time for the sun to provide the young millet plants with the energy they need to grow. sun are not all that's required for a successful harvest. The Mofu now have to invoke the spirit of the mountains, the Embolong, to ensure that the millet grows abundantly and becomes fully ripe. The highest rocks of the mountains symbolize the power of the spirit. Before them, the Mofu are like ants in front of a tree, so small. O oh, spirit of the rocks, Protect the people of the mountains. Let the stalk of this sacred plant climb to your heights. Give it your strength so that this year, finally, the harvests will be good. On Mazangil Rock, the sacrificer tears off part of the mountain's spirit from the monolith three times. This gesture symbolizes its sacred union with the people. He then distributes a share of the spirit to those accompanying him, the village ambassadors. Then finally, he sends the prayers of the entire people to the rock. <laughs> Will the mountain hear the Mofu's prayers? Nothing could be less certain. The harvests have been disappointing for several years. The granaries in the village are almost empty, and the termites in Sidi's home are making the situation even worse because they're now threatening the last supplies of millet. It's time for old Mats Grawai to check whether the Zaglavak ant has answered his plea. The termites are still here. Zaglavak didn't come. It did not hear our prayers. We will have to go get it. I've had it with these termites. They have to go. The termite mounds are growing. We can't wait much longer. Jirba doesn't have the right to bother me so much. Did it help me build this house? Do you know how much money I spent for wood and straw to repair what it destroyed? I don't like it. It has to leave. Don't get angry. This is not its house. Don't worry. We will go find Jagrabak. Now that it has rained, it's easy. We will bring it back here and it will drive these termites out.
Idrisu, I need you to find the Jaglavak ant. During the dry season, it's unusual to see it, but during the rainy season, they often come out to hunt in the fields. If you run into it, be very careful because it's a ferocious animal. Only the prayer we say to it makes it harmless. Without this prayer, all the Jaglavaks would come out of the ground and climb all over you. How can an ant be so dangerous? Jaglavak is powerful because of its numbers and its cunning. It is pitiless and never gives up. Some people have even seen it devour a lion. To defeat a large prey, it attacks by surprise. It goes in through the nostrils and the mouth and down as far as the entrails, where it eats the animal from the inside out. The creature can't defend itself because the danger is invisible. That's why Jaglavak is the prince of the insects. Jaglavak is able to understand men. Look for it in holes and under stones. If you find it, don't touch it. Come tell me quickly. Do you understand? At this time of year, the mountains are filled with grasshoppers, praying mantis, crickets, coleoptera, all insects that flourish during the rainy season. And the children love these small prey that are added to their daily meal. But the insect hunt today will be special because they also have to look for the powerful Jaglavak, the Red Prince. Insects are part of every aspect of life among the Mofu, whether they serve a spiritual, domestic, agricultural, or simply playful function. Here, men project their own behavior onto the insects living in society, like the ants and the termites. Former warriors during the great Peul invasions they view these troops of army ants as ideal fighters. According to legends, in its nest, Jaglavak guarded the war stone from which it drew its power. The person who found Jaglavak's stone would make the army of his village invincible. With this stone, each warrior became as red as the ant and a hundred times stronger. The enemies fled in terror. <laughs> But for the time being, Jaglavak can't be found, and the children have to keep looking, much more interested in their hunt for goodies and much more successful. The children eat different types of insects depending on the seasons, and they learn very early on to distinguish between edible and toxic insects. The children have caught lots of insects, but there's no sign of Jaglavak. Jaglavak, Jaglavak, what's going on? Get ready, boy. 
Come, I'm here. How did your hunt go? Good. That's all. And Jaglavak. Jaglavak. Jaglavak? We saw it not so far away. We tried to bring it back to you, but we couldn't do it. They were too mean. But I told you to come to get me before. There was a reason. Several of us tried to pick them up, and we were all stung. They climbed all over our legs and in our shorts, stinging us. It still hurts. If you had come to get me, it wouldn't have happened. I hope you didn't make them leave their nest. We'll go back tomorrow to try to gather them up. Meals consisting of insects are reserved especially for young children. For adults, eating insects means that they are unable to cultivate their fields and provide for their own needs. Even though secretly, some people just can't resist the pleasure of crunching on a few winged termites and grilled grasshoppers. They are served with the ball of millet that forms the bulk of the staple meal. Come, Grandfather, the nest is right here. They are hunting. Before gathering them, we have to pour ochre on them. They like this powder because it's red like they are. Jaglavak, allow us to gather you up. We need you. You are the most powerful of animals. I offer you the ochre you like. We need you to drive Dlerba the termite from one of our homes. You alone can help us. Is that it? I can dig? 
Yes, go ahead, dig. Gather them up. Don't pick up too much dirt. Try to get the largest ones. It stings. They're attacking me. You didn't say your prayers. Try to get them off. Don't move so much. You'll only make them angrier. Let's move away from the nest. You can take them off as we go. Will you teach me the prayers? Yes, if you like. Welcome, Jaglavak. Thank you, my prince, for coming to our home. We gathered you up so that you can help us drive out the termites that are eating one of our houses. Thank you, prince. Agree to help us. You alone are capable of doing this job. Forgive us for bothering you. You are a powerful warrior. Drive the termites from the house. Save the chickens, the goats, the children. Only attack Glirba the termite. Thank you, Jaglavak. Let's go to the termite mound at your house. We are taking you with us, Jaglavak. According to the Mofu, the Jaglavak's front legs are so powerful that a mere hundred of them are enough to drive out a colony of termites as large as the one in Sidi's house. The secret of their strength is not in their size, but in the precision of their massive attacks and their tenacity. Jaglavak, a distant cousin of the visiting ant, is an army ant a bloody predator that doesn't stop at attacking livestock or terrorizing the people of the bush. Through observation, the Mofu have learned that termites are one of its favorite preys. Here are the termites that are bothering us. Jaglavak, drive them from this house forever. Jaglavak, I give you the ochre that makes you invincible. Fight for us. But the termite mound is well guarded. The Dlirba soldiers are up to 20 times larger than the Jaglavak ants. A single snap of their mandibles is enough to cut the bodies of their tiny assailants in half. For the ants, the assault is strategic. They immobilize the giants by grabbing onto their legs and their antennae. 
These efforts seem useless, but when the ants work together, they're effective. And some soldiers are already overwhelmed by the attack of the fighting ants. The blows are unbelievably precise, and yet neither the termites nor the ants have any visual organs. They do, however, have a highly developed sense of smell and touch. Once the termite is immobilized, the ants use their sharp mandibles to tear apart the joints of the giant's thick protective shell. The enemy's defenses are broken. All the ants have to do is penetrate into the kingdom. The enormous head of a termite soldier still blocks access to the heart of the nest with calculated precision. But the progress of the ants is now inevitable, and soon the entire colony will pour like a stream of blood into the maze-like depths of the termite mound. Their goal now is to reach the queen, the essential organ of the colony and unlimited supply of eggs that the ants love. The king encourages the queen to leave. The alert has been given in the royal dwelling. Helped by workers who pull her towards a specially built exit, the queen ripples her immense abdomen to escape from certain death. Not far away, a few soldiers try unsuccessfully to slow down the progress of the ants. But the scouts, attracted by the queen's scent, have already occupied all the tunnels. The queen flees with difficulty. As fast as they can, the workers now have to plug the entrance to the tunnel through which she disappeared before the ants reach the royal cell. has escaped. She will be followed in her exodus by the entire colony, which will soon build a new termite mound outside City's house. The termites have fled. Everything went as planned. That's good. I'm relieved. Thank you, Jaglavak. Farewell, dear Ba. Once again, Jaglavak has proved worthy of the Mufu's trust. As promised, he has driven out the termites while sparing the men and the livestock, then disappeared underground, taking along his loot of eggs and larvae. Now that the termites are gone, the collapsed roofs have to be repaired as quickly as possible, as the millet is almost ripe in the fields and the harvest is about to start. It's essential for the house to become strong and beautiful again, so that Sidi can fill up his granaries and satisfy the spirits of the ancestors who live there as it is they who will watch over the precious millet seeds after the harvest. This year, the spikes are full, and the harvest promises to be abundant. Millet is one of the few grains that grow in this mountainous region, where the poor soil and unpredictable rains are not conducive to farming. For the Mofu, millet is the symbol of their survival. 
and the survival of everything that lives in the mountains. Starting with the millet bird. It's time for the bird to return the seeds that were given to it by the black ant during the dry season. Thanks to the millet bird, the ant can replenish its supplies. Supplies that the mofu sometimes use as a last resort during periods of great food shortages. When the bird pecks at the stalks, it means that the millet is ready for harvest. The millet plants can grow up to four meters high here. The villagers and their homes are submerged in this sea of plants. Using hoes, men and women knock over the giant stalks. Everyone participates in the harvest. The crop is distributed among the heads of families and their wives, who each have their own granary. The stalks are gathered together for threshing a more strenuous activity that is the exclusive domain of the men. After separating the seeds from the stalks, the mofu let the wind remove the skin, which is an irritant. November has come. The granaries, the belly of the home, are filling up. The millet cycle is over. Before we lived at the top of the mountain, close to nature. Today I feel a bit lost. It seems like a part of our tradition stayed up there. The insects all around us have the same needs as we do. They share our fields and our homes. That is why we have to help each other. But if we don't talk to the insects anymore, they will stop helping us.
But this unique link between the mofu and the insects is fragile. The traditions are gradually being lost, and perhaps the time is not far off when the mofu will no longer play with the insects, or when the insects of the Mandara Mountains will no longer speak to the people of the rocks. <laughs>